Hi folks, how's it going? We're still in strange times. Uh, we're going to cover another Sunday School lesson. Uh, this is for Easter Sunday of 2020. Uh, one of at least tw two times I can think of in my lifetime that I have not been to church on Easter Sunday. So we're still kind of in the shelter in place and quarantine from the COVID virus. But there's a glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel and hopefully some of this stuff may be lifting. Uh, people are recovering left and right over the, from from the virus and even though more and more numbers are coming in that people have it there's just that many more that are surviving it so it's not the death sense that everybody tried to make it out to be so we're in uh, the gospel project in the spring uh, we're going to be going over uh, Paul's uh, letter to the Corinthians first Corinthians 15 1 through uh, 22 so we'll read it, and then we'll start start discussing it. So now I want to make clear to you, brothers and sisters, the gospel I preached to you, which you received, on which you have taken your stand, by which you are being saved, if you hold to the message I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I passed on to you, as most important, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve, and then he appeared to over five hundred brothers and sisters at one time. Most of them are still alive, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one born out of the wrong time, he also appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, not worthy to be called an apostle, because I per persecuted the church of God, and by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, not yet, yet not I, but the grace of God that was within me. Uh, whether then it is I or it is they, so we proclaim and you have believed but as in Christ has but as it is Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep for since death came through a man the resurrection of the dead also comes through man for just as Adam all die also in Christ all will be made alive so we're covering uh, the Apostle Paul's, one of the first letters to the Corinthians. There's speculation that there were at least three different letters to the Corinthians that they passed around to the different churches. Uh, so one of the churches that Paul ministered to after his conversion uh, says, Now I want to make it clear to you, brothers and sisters, the gospel I preach to you, which you received, on which you have taken your stand, by which you are being saved, if you hold to the message I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, he's wanting to encourage them and remind them that he wants to make it clear that the, to the congregation that the gospel he preached to you and that they received on which they took their stand, by which you are being saved, if you hold to the message I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I passed on to you this most important I also received that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. So he's talking about there that the gospel that he gave them, for them to hold fast to it, to, to cling to it, of Jesus uh, being crucified, being betrayed, crucified, and then resurrected on the third day. Not only was he resurrected, but uh, he appeared. And this is all according to the scriptures. If you go throughout the Old Testament, there's there's many, many, many uh, prophecies about Jesus and about his death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, some of them are cryptic, but some of them are, are straight out. But as you go through some of the minor some of the prophets of the Old Testament, that Jesus will be there, and that he uh, that he died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried. Uh, all four of the gospels have. Um, have references to that and each one from a different point of view. So in Matthew 26 through 28, Mark 11 and 14 through 16, Luke 22 through 24, and John 17 through 21 are the different uh, scriptures of the Gospels that 
refer to the crucifixion and the things that happened during the Holy Week or during Passover as they celebrated Passover and Jesus became our sacrificial lamb. Not only did he, he after he was raised on the third day, he appeared to uh, several of the disciples to Cephas and then to the twelve. Not only that, but he appeared to over 500 individuals. And at the time of Paul writing this letter, there were many of them that were still alive. So it was like, if you don't believe me, go find someone who saw him after uh, he was crucified. It was a big deal there in Jerusalem during the Passover that Jesus was crucified. And then, can you just imagine the stir and the hubbub that, that took place after Mary Magdalene and all the other ladies ran to the tomb and found that it was empty, that the stone had been rolled away? not to mention what the stories the soldiers may have told, even though they were bought off and the Jewish tradition holds true that somebody swooped in and uh, overcome the guard and stole the body of Jesus. But nonetheless, we see that he, he was not, the body was not stolen. Uh, it was Chuck Colson that said that that was one of the things that, that won him to Christ is that he being part of Watergate and that he was one of about 12 or 13 individuals they couldn't hold to a lie. So therefore, those 12 uneducated men could not hold to a lie that Jesus rose from the dead after being persecuted because the, the guys of Watergate, regardless of how hardened they may have been or how poised they may have been, they couldn't hold a lie. <coughs> And so we see there that that was one of the things that uh, made Chuck Colson think twice about the resurrection and everything. And Paul goes on and talks about that um, he was born out of time. How many times? There are lots of times I feel like I haven't, I haven't figured out if I was born 100 years too early or 100 years too late because I like all the old simple times. Be it there again, I, I kind of like some of the technology and a lot of people give me a hard time for being against change. But uh, that's a whole different story. Nonetheless, we see that uh, Paul felt like that he was uh, born out of time or reborn. As Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Well, last of all, Paul was saying, last of all, born at the wrong time. He appeared to me. He, the, road, the, the Damascus Road experience where the bright light came and Jesus came down as Paul was on his way to persecute the church in Damascus. Uh, he said, Paul, Paul, why, or Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? You kick against the goads. And so Jesus appeared to Paul, one out of time. And they feel like that uh, he was the, uh, the, should have been the last apostle instead of the one that they cast lots for right after Judas died and after the resurrection. But he goes on, for I am the least of the apostles, not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church. He still, so many times, it's too, it's, it's easy to forgive other people, but sometimes it's hard to forgive ourselves when we feel like we've done something wrong or we have done something wrong, and all the parties that we've wronged have forgiven you, but sometimes you have a hard time forgiving yourself. So Paul was having that issue there because he had letters to put Christians to death or to at least persecute them, persecute the way, the, the church. Uh, those that were following Christ, that he didn't feel like he was worthy to be called an apostle. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me is not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that is within me. How many times do we try to overcome our mistakes working harder than we did before trying to overcome that? And he talks about by, by the grace of God, Grace is the gift that God gives us of not giving us what we deserve. And mercy, you no, know, mercy is giving, not giving us what we deserve. And grace is giving us what we do not deserve. You can't have grace without mercy and mercy without grace. Those two kind of go hand in hand. So mercy is not getting what we deserve. And grace is getting what we do not deserve. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. That's just Paul was talking that he is a child of God. Because of God's grace, I am what I am. He is an apostle of God, apostle of Jesus by God's grace because he is what he is. I am what I am, and his grace toward me is not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, 
Yet not I, but the grace of God was within me. Whether then it is I, it is I or they. So we proclaim that you have believed. It doesn't matter who gets the credit, except for God gets the credit. You know, the, it doesn't matter. Paul later, earlier in, on in these scriptures, it talks about that one planted another water, but it's God who gives the increase. And so that we see that we go through this and through God's grace, we can win others to him. You know, in this day and age, one of the, the, the oddest things is the run on the toilet paper. And, you know, if you found a batch of toilet paper somewhere, you'd run and tell somebody. We have something so much better than toilet paper, as comical as it may sound. But we have we have the love of God. We've got the gospel, which we're celebrating today, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. And so we have the best thing going. But as but as it is, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits from all who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through man. But for just as Adam all die, all so also in Christ all will be made alive. Going back to verse 20, but Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. From the beginning of time, in Genesis chapter 1, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 2, it's a spotlight on God creating Adam and Eve. And then in Genesis chapter 3, they go their own way and they forsake God or they forsake his ways and fall into the trap of Satan and eat of the forbidden fruit, the knowledge of good and evil. And from that point in time on, God told Adam that uh, these bodies weren't mis meant to last. He said, from the earth you came, from it you will make your living, and to it you must return. So from that time forward, man died, which may not have been part of God's plan, but or the, the effects of death weren't part of God's plan. But since a death came through a man, through Adam, the resurrection of the dead also came through a man. There's no more important hyphen than that of what Jesus is, God hyphen man. Jesus was all God. Jesus was all man. He was the propitiation for our sin. He was a sacrifice for our sin. So just as Adam all died, so also in Christ all will be made alive. Because we are descendants of Adam, we are bound to die unless Jesus comes again. But then, if we do die, if we have our heart and life, if we've given our heart and life to Jesus, then we will be saved by His blood, by His grace, in faith in Him alone. So Christ, we will all be made alive. If you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, called out to Him and realized that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, then that is the only way towards our Heavenly Father. So as we go through and we celebrate this Resurrection Sunday, this Easter Sunday, whether we're at home or whether you, you see this and we're back to some semblance of normal, but we realize that through the blood, de death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, we can be forgiven of our sins and that through that, we will all be made alive. Now, as we go through this, we're going to go through the uh, different uh, fill-in-the-blanks. Uh, the first one is on page 64 if you've got one of the Sunday School books. It says, Adam, the first man, Jesus, God, hyphen man, and gives scripture references, Genesis 2, 7, and then Luke 1, 30 through 33, centered in the image of God, uh, created, I'm sorry, created in the image of God, Genesis 1, 26 through 27. Jesus Christ is the image of God, Colossians 1, 15. From the earth, a man of dust, 1 Corinthians 15, 4, 4, 47. And then Jesus from heaven, a life-giving spirit. His, then Adam, his sin brought death to all humanity, Romans 5, 12. And then Jesus, his sinless death, brought life to all those who believe, Romans 5, 17. His sin resulted in condemnation for all humanity, but in Jesus, his perfect life resulted in justification for all who believed. So we've got on the, the column of Adam. Let's see if I can show you that right quick.
not really sure how to focus this. But first Adam created dust, death, condemnation, and then the column of Jesus Christ, God man, the image of God, uh, life giving spirit, his sinless death brought life, resulted in justification. So God man, the spirit, life, justification. And then the second one, the second fill in the blank, which is at the bottom of page 64. Life after death. The Bible teaches us that when Christ dies, he that when a Christian dies, he or she immediately is with the Lord, but awaiting the future resurrection. For those who are not in Christ, after life after death is a result of being separated from Christ in the state of suffering, even though the future judgment remains. So in Corinthians, Paul said to be absent from the body is to be uh, present with the Lord. So we see where the resurrection separated in judgment. So hopefully you glean something out of this. Um, we'll be signing off, closing in a word of prayer. Fathers, we come before you. We ask you that you touch the lives of people that may be watching this. Uh, thank you for your word. Thank you for your death, burial, and resurrection, that we can be justified and sanctified uh, and made righteous to you, and that through you, we can have life abundantly and eternally with you. Father, we love you and thank you for all that you do for us. These things we ask your precious holy name. Amen. Remember, one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last by C.T. Studd. No reserves, no retreats, no regrets. William Borden. Solo Deo Gloria was a signature that Johann Sebastian Bach, George Frederick Handel, and Christopher uh, Gruppner would put on the bottoms of their of the right of their music. One laugh, three R's, SDG, solo deo gloria. Thank y'all. Y'all have a good day.